Welcome to this presentation about the senior design project as an ABET requirement. I'm Adil Gasly. I would like to highlight that most of the material here that will be presented was uh, taken from uh, the site that is shown uh, below here. One of the essential major components to achieve program accreditation is the approval of its capstone design activities, which are here in our department referred to as the senior design projects. The goal of this presentation is to provide a formal introduction to the various components that should be included in a senior design project. Senior design activities can be structured in many different ways, as will be discussed in greater details later in this presentation. I will define the typical objectives of a senior design activity, many of the different possible formats that may be used, and what must be accomplished for the results of a senior design project to be considered as a successful experience. Before that, let's see first what is the meaning of design and what's the difference between science and design. According to ABET definition, engineering design is the process of devising a system, component or process to meet desired needs. So it is a decision-making process, which is often iterative, in which the basic science are applied to convert resources optimally to meet a uh, stated objective. Among the fundamental elements of a design process are the establishment of objectives and criteria, synthesis, analysis, construction, testing, and evaluation. So this is an essential component of engineering education. Now let's see the differences between engineering science and engineering design. In engineering science, problems are well posed, it means complete, unambiguous, free from internal contradiction, and the solutions are unique and compact, are they identifiable closer, and require application of specific knowledge. In contrast, engineering design, problems are poorly posed, so they are never complete, usually they are ambiguous, always contain internal contradictions, and the solutions they are never unique and rarely have identifiable, identifiable uh, closure. And usually they require integration of diverse knowledge. So engineering science problems and engineering design problems are different. Now let's see some typical objectives of the senior design project. One objective could be to provide the team design, implementations if possible, and this implementation could include testing and documentation, and review experience similar to that encountered in the industry. A second objective could be to apply team's composite knowledge to solve a contemporary engineering problem. Another objective could be to learn to apply knowledge from other courses, other sources, and industrial training experience, as well as common sense. Another objective could be to learn how to learn on a need-to-learn basis using traditional and information age resources. Another objective also could be to enhance the thought and planning process, to develop the necessary project management skills, and to deliver what was promised in the project plan, including operational hardware and or software, if applicable, of course, and documented results. One more important objective is to improve written and oral communication skills, and soft skills, of course. Last but not least is to acquire additional knowledge and information that will be helpful in both the senior design sequence and the initial industrial experience or employment after graduation. So these are some typical objectives that could be considered when developing a senior design project course. Now, let's see what are the most important items that are required for a successful project. So for a project to be considered successful, the resultant end product must meet or even exceed all the original design objectives that were set from the beginning. Also, the resultant end product must have been thoroughly tested and the resultant end product must have been thoroughly documented also. So it's about meeting the objectives validating the results, and documenting all the results. 
Besides, the project must have been completed within the previously approved budgets for human labor, parts, financial resources, and possibly other resources also that need to be considered when you do the financial analysis or economical analysis. Finally, the project must have been completed by the originally scheduled completion date. So uh, delivering on time is very important also. The judgment on the success of the project should be considered by all involved parties, the project advisor, the course coordinator, the project evaluators, and the clients if there are any. This slide illustrates all the criteria that we considered earlier for a successful project. Now let's see what are the elements that contribute toward a successful senior design project. These are teamwork and knowledge, communications and responsibility, documentation and management, and experience and leadership. So all these together will contribute toward a successful senior design project. Now when you prepare a proposal for a senior design project, there are some information that are useful, and this information will judge on the appropriateness of the project for a senior design uh, experience or not. So let's see some examples of information that could be used to determine if the project is appropriate or not. First, there should be a problem or project description. There should be also mention of expected deliverables the required expertise and or equipment, maximum project cost and source of funding, the support that we provided by the client, such as the financial support, materials, and also expertise, expected ownership requirements should be well-defined also, should also mention any confidentiality requirements, issues related to health and safety, description of any previously related works, and any post-project dissemination requirements or limitations. Now let's see some good practice related to the preparation of the project proposal, and starting with the project description. Normally, project description is composed of two main parts. The first part is generally is the project description written in non-technical language that can be easily understood by any person. Actually, this first part summarizes the problem by ground. The second part contains a somewhat more technical problem description. This is the kind of information we find in the introduction of the report that will be later on submitted by the students. The intended users and uses of the end product should be clearly identified by the client, it could be the project supervisor, and this should be done prior to starting the project. This also could be done by the students who are taking the project, and this should be done during the project definition stage. The project team may identify additional users and uses that will be included uh, subject, of course, to uh, the approval of the, their supervisors. So each function that the end product should be capable of performing should be completely specified from the beginning. Likewise, any function that the end product is not expected to perform should also be identified. Next, the expected deliverables and their scheduled delivery dates should be formally agreed upon by all participating parties. Also, from the beginning of the project, there should be an agreement regarding the form of these deliverables. For example, if hardware is involved, what is its form? Is it to be in proof or concept, prototype or final commercial form? So the, all this should be defined from the beginning. An important thing that should be also considered from the beginning is the expertise of the students and uh, what are the equipment that will be uh, needed for the, the successful conduction of this project. So the educational background and other experience needed by the team members to ensure a reasonable high probability of project success must be defined. So how many people will, with each special type of expertise are needed and as well as how many total people are needed for the project team. 
This does not mean that the team needs to have all of the requirements, knowledge and experience beforehand. We used to uh, put all this information in the uh, proposal format that we used to uh, use previously. What it does mean is that the team does need any knowledge and experience that it cannot reasonably be expected to develop during the course of the project. So it's a prerequisite. The fact that a particular topic has not been covered in class is not an excuse that students should express. Remember that we are preparing lifelong learners. Remember that faculty members expect students to remember perfectly anything to which they supposedly have been exposed in previous classwork or intern experience. Any special requirement, engineering expertise on the part of the faculty advisor is another item that should not be overlooked. Uh, most faculty members are not rocket scientists. However, regardless, the faculty advisors needs to understand the project management in order to assist the student team. Finally, we should not forget the need for special and expensive equipment that the institution may not have. Now coming to the estimated project costs and source of funding, the maximum estimated project costs should be specified. As you know, senior design projects have very limited individual project budget, such as 1,000 Qatari reals per project. If a client with a sponsor is not underwriting the complete cost, an adequate source of project funding should be well identified from the beginning. If the project cost is significant, there should be a contingency plan in case the cost greatly exceeds the estimated cost or the source of funding fails to materialize or disappears. Now let's see the health hazards and or risks considerations. As you know, health hazards risks are an extremely important consideration of all design projects. Many materials may present health hazards or risks. So people involved in this project need to be aware of any health hazards and to take the necessary safety precautions. Any monitoring equipment should be checked to make sure that it is in correct working order. It is possible that under certain uh, circumstances, certain project activity should not be undertaken by a lone individual. Now to conclude, I will say that all final year projects offered every year without exceptions must satisfy the design requirement presented today. Therefore, I suggest that a thorough revision of all project proposals has to take place soon and updated proposals should be recollected by the project committee for filing and redistribution to students. All student reports in the first semester should highlight the design component associated to their project and any missing components that are suggested to be added to the project must be added in the second semester. I also suggest that a series of seminars about design should be scheduled immediately and presented to all students taking their senior design projects. These seminars will surely help students understand better the meaning of design and know how to proceed in their design projects. Thank you for listening.